Now, all right, thank you for staying with us. We're continuing this discussion as we wait for the special sitting in Parliament. In fact, I've been told it's just a regular seat. It's an ordinary sitting, just an extended sitting. It's not a special sitting in Parliament, but we'll cross over there in just a bit. My guests are still with me in studio. But let's take some reactions, first of all, from the people and speak to Chris Pinotieno in Kisi and find out what the people think in regards to that impeachment of the Deputy President. Crispin, good morning. It's good to see you. What are the people's sentiments in Kisi? Well, a very good morning, uh, Trevor. We are coming to you live from Kisi, a town centre. And here uh, on the streets, residents are saying that political syllabus is really moving very fast. And uh, they are here with me. They just want to weigh into the conversation with regards to what was happening yesterday at the Senate, where uh, the former Deputy President, Rigadi Gashagwa, I was ousted. I just want to give them an opportunity just to share with us uh, what they have to say uh, with regards to uh, the impeachment pro uh, process we saw yesterday. Uh, share with us what's your name and then Maunyako Tafadali. My name is Edward Ongao. I'm a resident of Kisi. I'm very grateful to the, uh, to the Senate and the people of Kenya. In fact, uh, for the last uh, uh, two months or three months, I've seen the deputy president actually trying to to say that uh, Kenya actually uh, it, it, it's a shareholding. So uh, for that reason, mimi nimefraia sana vira wa mimu impeach. Ningetaka mauni yangu. Tukwe uh, na amani na Kenya lazima tukwe na mutu ambaya na tetea uh, ze msote za inchi. So for that reason, I'm very, really grateful to the Senate and the people of Kenya that uh, the, uh, the deputy president has been impeached. So, ire maoni yangu mi ningependelea kusema, ni vire ningependelea, maybe we have somebody mwenye anaeza kuwa anafiti the seat of the deputy president na maoni yangu mimi. Ninaonelea Mr. Ninaonelea Mr. The governor of Moranga, Irungu Kangatha. Akuwe deputy president. Asante sana. Wacha tupate maoni zaidi, mzee karibu. Ulifuatilia matukio ya ilivyokuwa ya kijiri katika bunge la seneti. Maoni yako ni yapi? Machi kwa machina na hitu Wilson Yakunda Buga. Mkaasi wa Kisi Count. Niliona hii nilifuatilia kutoka kwa bunge. Uyu gachagwa hata aseme visuri, hata aseme nini. Walikuwa mekata kesi hataenda nyumbani. Wakati niliona kwa seneti, seneti walikuwa naongea vizuri. Kwa zao walikuwa naongea, wao, wao ni kama churches, lazima watoe ukweli. Sasa naona hata ruto akiweka mtu kutoka Mount Kenya. Mount Kenya hakuna, hakuna kura sake. Hii suru sake simekuisa Mount Kenya. Aone paringine, aweke David Pleasant. Thank you so much. Eh, tuambie mauni yako ni yapi eh, baada ya uh, naibu wa rais, aliyekuwa naibu wa rais kubanduli wapo jana. Eh, mauni yangu ni kwamba wale maseneta wakufanya kitu mzuri. Eh, kitu ya kwanza, wote waliona kwamba huyu jamaa hako ana makosa. Lakini sasa, waka, wakaenda mbele kupiga kura mbaka satano ya usiku, ili kumpandua. Hata kama mtu wa mekosa, eh, Gashago alifanya kasi usiku na mjana kitaftia raisi kura. Lakini sasa kumpandua aliona ndiyo kitu mzuri. Mimi maoni yangu ni kwamba hiyo sio kitu mzuri. Kwa majina naitwa Sami. Mimi kitu ningesema Gashago akufanyiriwa vizuri. Ruta alikosea. Kwa sababu kama sio Gashago, Ruta angechukua takura. Ruta alijaribu Gashagwa alijaribu kupigana vita akapata kura mingi kutoka Mount Kenya. Kama sio Gashagwa Ruta angepata kura lakini amekosea. Unajua hata mimi sasa hivi niko hivi kama niko na gari niandike driver niandike na conductor. Kama nimevuta conductor pesa zinaibiwa anaenda nyumbani. Kon, na conductor nikiona driver na yeye ameweza kuiba anaenda nyumbani. Hivyo watu wanataikana kwenda nyumbani. Hai suru. Asante sana. I think I will be sampling more views uh, we will get back to you. Uh, Trevor, I will be sampling more views uh, from Kisi uh, County as time goes just to get their opinion with regards to what transpired yesterday at the Senate and we'll still be able to link up with you later on so that we continue to sample more views from different quarters. Uh, we just get to hear what they have to say and what kind of a deputy president they would wish to have uh, once uh, another one has been nominated. Back to you, uh, Trevor from Kisi County. We Thanks. shall leave it at that.
Thank you, Crispin. Crispin Otieno, they are speaking to us from Kisi. We'd certainly like to hear more from the people there. We'll cross over there in just a short while. But joining me now is also Javas Bigambo, Governance and Public Policy Analyst and expert here. Thank you, for making time, Javas. Thank you, Trevor. Before we get into the looking into the future and who now should take over, because this is the main conversation that everybody's talking about, were you surprised by the turnout of the vote at the Senate? Well, not quite. Of surprising things, the only surprising thing for me was that the deputy president was surprised by his eviction because he didn't see it coming. But what to me was critical was the manner in which the senators took time to weigh into issues, speak to uh, the, the charges and the evidence that uh, was uh, availed or adduced. But with regard to the final vote of the five charges that the Senate now affirmed, that now confirmed the impeachment, yeah. I would say that I saw them considering the weighty issues, and I think it was important that those were confirmed. The others that were the six that uh, uh, were, were not confirmed by the senators by way of their vote, I think some of them still, if we were to reflect deeper, uh, still could carry some weight mm. in terms of consideration. Okay. So I was not personally surprised by the uh, outcome of the Senate. Do you think this now sets a precedence for any of the public officials to be easily impeached? Because there are those who argue that if any of them were to be mirrored against the allegations against the deputy president, none of them would, would be successful. They would all be impeached. Trevor, when it comes to reflecting on matters precedence, huh? It's not just a question of the lowering of the threshold. For me, the, fact, the first aspect of the precedence is if parliament has acted in these judicious, independent, uh, perceptively, manner, then it should actually be a progressive, encouraging precedent that moving forward, parliament should continue demonstrating that uh, uh, approach or aspect of independence the way they have demonstrated that without overt or overtures of influence from any other quarters, they can actually do their work. If that is the message that Parliament has sent to Kenyans, then I think moving forward, yeah. there is the legitimate expectation on part of Kenyans that Parliament should continue working independently with such kind of meteoric speed on issues of public interest for the greater good of Kenyans. Yeah. Now, there's a general perception from the people, in fact, even the ones that we've spoken to, that there seems to be an issue of a betrayal of the mountain region. For, is, that, is that a valid concern, first of all? And going forward, what should the president consider when he appoints a deputy president? Must this man or woman come from the Mount Kenya region? Not really. You see, when it comes to the events that have shaped the politics of Kenya and Kenya's polity in the past two months, Various schools of thought have emerged uh, that have swayed perception, and people have belonged to various schools of thought. I always say that schools of thought are there to be freely joined because they don't call for school fees. So those who are agreeing that uh, it is a question of politics of betrayal, I think it is their right to consider it that way. But you see, some of these perceptions are influenced by uh, the ethnocentric nature of our politics. Some of them could be people from uh, the Mlima, as it, it's been, uh, uh, you know, christened. Some think that because of the twinning of interests prior to the 2022 elections, President William Ruto and Rigadi Gashagwa should have remained joined to the hip, at the hip rather, all the way to, you know, through the first term. Yes. There are those who think that wearing judicious lenses of reflecting on the imperatives of governance, yes. a constitutional order, and a politics that is not a whirlwind kind of move, where every single day Kenyans wake up with anxiety, oh, really? looking at and analyzing the body language Why? between the president and the deputy, looking at the politicians, so, imagining that those who are allied to the DP yeah. should be uh, not so kind and uh, free with the president, etc. This kind of politics is not oh, something that we should so entertain because it leaves very bad taste in the mouth. Mm. And so I would Actually, say that well, it's it not, when you look at it from very narrow lenses and perspectives, then you would say it's a politics of oh, betrayal. No, no, but no. I would say if it's a question of Sour. a politics of order, a democracy that's progressive, and a presidency as an institution that makes sense to Kenyans with respect to governance, appreciating that Kenyans want law and order which order should be demonstrated with, uh, within every institution, including the presidency, then I think it's not about betrayal. Because Trevor, let's face it, yeah. if we're to appreciate that even the secretary to the cabinet 
had sworn an affidavit against the DP. We saw even CS Alfred Mutua engaging public participation, affirming and taking his position that the DP must go, former DP Rigadi Gashagwa. It tells you that actually the work relationship within the cabinet with the inclusion of the DP would have been a very weird situation. You imagine, for example, if in the last week or the week before, cabinet had been convened, how would the DP relate in that kind of atmosphere? So for the greater good of cabinet, for the greater good of the executive, yeah. for the greater good of the country, I think we need sober satisfaction in terms of consideration on how we need to move forward. We need to take to have politics of sobriety. Mm. And we need, for the, uh, prospectively, the person who should take over uh, as DP or the DP designate in the not so distant future should be somebody that has got, is not only conscientious, yeah. but is somebody that also has got the nationalistic aura mm. and with the fine plumage of nationalism and patriotism, yeah. somebody that is all inclusive in character, speech, yeah. and manner. But must this person come from the mountain? Not necessarily. You see, look, the mountain is critical when you look at the political arithmetic. Yeah. But secondly, you see, after the exit of Moe Kibaki as former president, Moe's deputy president, the vice president position moved to other regions. Mm. And so it's possible to have a deputy president from other regions. But now, you see, between now and 2027, again, we may likely to have politics stirred up about mountainous issues and mountainous interests and uh, the oscillation and where they're likely to gravitate toward. So I think just for purposes of uh, agreeing that that partnership was there in the run-up to the 2022 general elections, mm. it may be just decent to have somebody from the wider Mount Kenya region, yeah. not necessarily a Kikuyu. Okay. It could be somebody from the Mount Kenya East. Yeah. And as long as, because of the arrangements that were there prior to the 2022 general elections, mm -hmm. it may make sense to have somebody from the wider Mount Kenya. Okay. Willis, how do you ensure now, going forward, that everybody is brought on board? You know, I'm listening to my colleagues now, Jawas. I'm interested that, it's interesting that he's saying that now the government will be able to work together. When Ruto and Gashaga were together, when did they ever work together anyway? I mean, when have they ever delivered to the people of Kenya? They, they, they say that the leopard does not change its spots. The failures of Kenya Kwanza were there when Gashaga was there. They'll still be there when Gashaga is not there. So there's nothing as the time to work for the people of Kenya. They've spent two years, they've not worked for the people of Kenya, even when they were united in causing us grief. Don't expect anything good for as long as we are discussing uh, politics, the way Javas is saying that we must not have to look at regionalism, the issue of politics, Mount Kenya, Murema will come in. You've removed Gashawa allegedly because he was um, causing national disunity. You are now discussing sharing of the slot based on regional considerations. He doesn't have to come from Murema, doesn't. In Safina, we are very clear. It's the ideology, not personality, not region. We are very clear on our politics. So that if we are all agreed on the ideology that informs our politics, the leader comes naturally, that we are about the economy. It's about the people, the common good of the people. Public interest, that's what we stand for. But their old politics, which was breached on the 25th of June, is where you are forced to start discussing politics based on this region has gotten this, this region has gotten this. That politics of regionalism, the master was uh, Moi, and Raila bettered it, and has actually shaped our politics since uh, 1992 to date. Mm. That has come to an end. It was a policy that was informed by the, 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 the thinking that if Mbadi is a CS for finance, then me as a Luo, I'm full. But go to Nyanza today. People are still sleeping angry. The problems they had the day before Mbadi became a CS, they are still there with them. When they say that Wanda uh, is now CS for energy, that now electricity is sleeping in CIA. The <laughs> poor infrastructure of electricity in Nyansia that was there before Mbadi became is still the same today. So we are moving away from this, and Kenyans are saying, I mean, if he's CS, good for him and his family. It's not about me. I'm more interested in a policy that the government is coming up with that changes my life. And that is the politics that us in Safina we believe in. 
We not discuss people based on this my region, I represent this region. You represent nobody in terms of a region. In terms of a region, you represent your family mm. and your children. But in terms of an ideology, yeah. ideology is non-geographical. Okay. It's not limited to a particular region. It spreads across the country. And that is the politics that we want to have in this country. And that is what Gen Z, when they came out on the 25th, they were tribeless, they were partyless. They were there not saying that the people of Central are buying from special shops, they get discounts. Or the people of Mount of Rift Valley have special petrol stations where they're given fuel at a cheaper price. No. In fact, you are the largest demonstrations that I've ever seen in Eldoret and Kerich, which are perceived to be regional, if you are go by their old politics, regions of William Ruto. But they're saying, no, you are a failure, William Ruto. You've messed up our economy. You are trying to overtax us. We are rejecting it. We want a better Kenya. And that is what we should be discussing. And I invite Javas. Javas was with me in university. And I know him to be a very versatile political animal. <laughs> he can adapt <laughs> quickly. <laughs> that join my fray of politics. Now you see, now you see, uh, Trevor. Yeah, I'll, 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 just walk. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I, I like. I'll come. I, I'll come. You know, Trevor. I like the crystal uh, thinking of uh, my kindred, uh, Willis here. And when he speaks about matters ideology, I fully agree. For instance, do you know that? All of us as Kenyans, huh? and let's give credit where it's due, that in the run-up to the 2022 general election, we watched with interesting mm -hmm. amazement uh, and interest, uh, uh, keenly when uh, UD at the time, uh, then formed Kenya Kwanza, came up discussing critical issues about how they are going to govern when Kenyans bestow them the opportunity and mandate to govern. When you talk about ideology, and I agree with Willis that... Um, Regionalism should not be the primary issue. But when you talk about uh, uh, ideologies, it's the same thing I was talking about politics of decency. Ideologies are decent, they're clear. They are time bound and they are specific to thematic issues, progressive issues that touch and transform the ordinary lives of citizens. Okay. I think moving forward, yeah. and I thank President William Ruto for having reorganized his cabinet, Kenyans are expecting yeah. with better breath that moving forward, and even as he picks uh, the DP next, it's important that that decency mm. should be the character of leadership huh? okay. at all levels, and this should actually be mirrored yeah. even at, um, at, uh, at uh, the county levels. Okay. I don't know whether Safina has got all members that are decent, <laughs> <laughs> even all those that ran for elections, but yeah. I want to pleasantly imagine that given that I know Willis to be very decent, that yeah. actually moving forward, we are going to be a cohesive nation, very decent mm. in our politics and even how we manifest when we take up public positions. Okay, Kathy, let me hear from you. How do we ensure that this, we shift to ideology politics and not personality? Uh, I, I think uh, we need to be more issue-based as opposed to discussing personality. Uh, and this will have to start from the person that is going to be picked or nominated by the president as the... As, as the the, the, the deputy president moving forward. He needs to be a person or she needs to be a person whom we can believe in, mm. someone who is accountable. And he, also, he or she also needs to be a very, very good communicator, needs to be a symbol of unity. Uh, but for the president and his government, I think uh, they need to go back to the drawing board because clearly all the sentiments that are coming uh, out you know, from Mashinani and even from this particular panel, mm. uh, we need to get our acts right and we need work to begin if it had, no, it had not already begun. I believe uh, the president has been trying to, to, to do uh, quite some work, but then there are all these questions, especially around the Gen Z killing, uh, that has been repeated here several, and even moving forward, how do we ensure mm. that uh, we are delivering and we are not just promising, but we are actually doing something that is tangible? Okay. Uh, I think the other the other comment that I would like to make is it is important that we now uh, see the the executive mm. uh, or even the president incorporate other people that felt as if they were not part of the government then, going by the comment that had been made by his deputy. Yeah. And it is also very important that he visits the mountain mm. because looking at what uh, 
uh, the people are saying uh, that that betrayal is something that he needs to deal with and one of the ways of dealing with that and making sure that the country is one again yeah. is by visiting them the same way he used to do before 2022. Okay. Joe, how do you ensure that everybody feels included going forward? And you had mentioned that this uh, the name doesn't have to be a person from the Mount Kenya region. Um, but um, if it is not, then the Mount Kenya region will feel secluded. So how do you ensure everybody feels included? You know, uh, there's, a, there's a famous quote from Martha Karua that our country is, a, is as good as its political parties. And, uh, and uh, I'm a strong believer yeah. of uh, national political parties that bring everybody on board and discuss issues mm. and do issue-based politics. The only way how we can cure this problem of Mutuetu is if we allow ourselves to have national political parties and do away with this kind of kiosk political party. Somebody goes around, like for, my, for example, I go to Busia, I tell the people, the hires of Busia, now we have our party. <laughs> I start moving around, auctioning them from one <laughs> office to the other. Those are the politics, barbaric kind of politics that belong to the yester years. Okay. We, the best way is to have a national political party that have strong ideologies that uh, the party leader of Zafina is talking about. Let people join political parties because of the strong ideology mm. that those political stand for. Okay. Then after that political party takes power, yeah. then we begin with, we give people positions or we give people privileges to serve in this uh, government yeah. because of merit, okay. not because they come from certain region. Okay. Do you know what this thing, and I've, I've, I've said it, you know, people do not understand the, the, the issues to do with the young people in this country. Mm. When you stand on a political podium and say this country is about shareholding, what are you telling the young people who have gone to university and they have their degrees, they have their qualification that they need to do? Mm. That's why nowadays in Kenya, it's not a hidden secret, it's not a hidden secret anymore. Mutu do you have connections? Because of such terminologies okay. and rhetoric from politicians. All right. And the best way, yeah. politicians need to address issues. Okay. The way, you know, there's something that uh, parliamentarians did, the way they assembled to impeach Rigadi Gashago. Yes, we all agree. Now you have impeached Rigadi Gashago. Yeah. Now we move forward. Okay. Moving forward, we want to see that oomph. Yeah. That With the way they used to discuss regarding Gachago yeah. Gachago's impeachment yeah. on discussing real issues that affect Kenyans. Okay, Paul, Paul, I'll come to you in just a bit. Let's cross over to Parliament where Emmanuel Toy is standing by. Emmanuel, good morning. It's good to see you. What do we expect today? Well, uh, thank you very much, uh, Trevor. After the dramatic scenes that we witnessed yesterday uh, that ushered the night of long knives that saw Deputy President Rigathi Gashagwa have a, a new title or another word added to his title of former uh, Deputy President, of course, the stage is set for his replacement. It seems uh, the country is ready to move regardless or regard regardless of his absence. And of course, uh, this is happening while he's still in hospital. And right now in uh, the National Assembly, the House is supposed to sit in the next few minutes. Uh, the House is supposed to reconvene or uh, to have it sitting from 9 a.m. But right now the members are still arriving. Uh, if my colleague could just uh, uh, show you what is happening, is that uh, some of the activities are uh, that uh, members of Parliament are streaming in. Uh, one of them is here. I don't know whether we could speak to you, Moshimiwa. Uh, just a quick word. Tell us your name and tell us what you expect today and what uh, constituency uh, you you representing in this uh, affair today? Uh, first and foremost is uh, to thank God for for, for being uh, having a peaceful country, for being uh, also uh, a united country. Uh, secondly, I'm uh, Honorable Musa Sirma from Elda Maravin, the MP for Elda Maravin. Uh, what we expect today is uh, the approval of uh, the new deputy president, whom uh, we are yet to be unveiled uh, right now to be to, to be informed, okay. and uh, after that is uh, we move on as a country. Okay. How long do you think uh, do we expect to see uh, the new nominee coming? 
after how long? Just within minutes. Uh -huh. Yeah, because uh, we don't we don't expect it. It's either so and so, and it is over. Okay. So it is not a debate about it. Already, the person who has uh, who is uh, sending the name to us, okay. of course, is the His Excellency the President. Thank so so it is uh, it is it is not about uh, trying to look for uh, rocket science or uh, invention of anything. Okay, okay. Yes. Thank you so much. That's Moshimiwa Musa Serma uh, from Eldama Ravine. And of course, uh, this side of the National Assembly is busy and it will be very busy because members are alighting from here. They are not allowed to park inside uh, for now uh, and uh, the security uh, situation is in this area has also been beefed up and uh, members are trying uh, to get in uh, within uh, uh, the required time because they are actually late uh, because uh, yesterday we saw an invitation to members uh, to turn up in good time. By 9 a.m. we should have had this uh, process begin. Uh, something else, Trevor, to just let our viewers know is that the new nominee for the deputy president position will come through this gate, uh, the National Assembly gate, uh, that uh, is going to be busy in the next few minutes. Security is very tight, and uh, we have seen this uh, in, probably from last evening until now, and we are told that uh, the nominee uh, whose name will be uh, tabled in the National National Assembly has also been informed and is uh, currently undergoing some briefing uh, before showing up here uh, to just go through that uh, 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 approval process uh, that the National Assembly is supposed to undertake. So uh, we are going to stay here and give you the details, uh, but this is the current situation here at the National Assembly. There's some more vehicles uh, coming in. Uh, it, it seems to be one of the House leadership members. Uh, remember that there are those members who have been uh, very crucial in terms of uh, ensuring they are here uh, within good time and uh, those are some of the officers uh, just ensuring that they are here. There is so much traffic around uh, these entrance of the National Assembly. Uh, there is one member there, Cheney member of uh, Parliament, uh, who is also <laughs> waiting to get his chance uh, to go there and, and, and of course uh, vote and I, I believe it shall be a, a vote by acclamation. And so we are going to continue with this, and I want to leave you with these live pictures of what is happening as members continue to stream in. Thanks, Emmanuel. Emmanuel told they are speaking to us live from Parliament Precincts. You can see the members of Parliament coming in for their session that's supposed to start at 9.30. It's actually they are slightly late. As soon as it kicks off officially, we'll take you there straight. But, Paul, we were speaking about how then do we ensure that we shift to ideology politics rather than personality politics? Because even what was being discussed here, who the person should come, who the person should be, where they should come from next, how do we ensure that we're focusing on ideology and not personalities? or even ethnic groupings? It's not an easy transition, uh, especially when people have been doing things the same old way. I had Willis talk about canoism. Uh, some of us are, are not too familiar even with that. This is in order to, you know, the, 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 the knack. Yeah. The, the knack people, and then uh, there was the ODM, and uh, uh, PNU arrangement, and then, um, Jubilee, TNA, URP thing, and now we have uh, this uh, Kenya Kwanza. So, um, majority of um, uh, my peers don't even understand that canoism. And, and unfortunately, Kenyan politics are shaped around individuals. Uh, so, the transition will not be easy. It's, it's necessary, but will not be easy. Uh, our politics are shaped around individual in such a way that if President William Ruto today formed a, dip, a different party, people will move with him. They'll move with him. They did. Because it's him they were following, not it's, the party. They're, they're following William Ruto. Yeah. If um, the, the former Prime Minister Ayer Odinga today formed a, dip, a different party other than the Orange Democratic Movement, people will move with him. Yeah, because those are his, his, his uh, fault. You saw uh, the late uh, Simon Yachai uh, when, with his uh, Ford People Party and the slogan, Watu, Wengi, Wengi Sana. <laughs> when you look back, <laughs> you know, there are no people following him. <laughs> you know, there are so many people in this country, parties in this country that don't have the key personalities that, you know, uh, have, 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 have huge support, um, uh, I would say populist uh, support in the country. And, and you, even if it's, it's like, um, I liken it to a plane, mm. uh, a chopper that is uh, on the ground trying to take off, you know, the, the engine is on and everything, but it's not taking off. Mm. So that's, 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 that's a position of a party 
that doesn't have that personality with the charisma yeah. uh, to, to, to mobilize the, the, the masses to follow them. And I really hope we can transition to issue-based politics and mm. ideologies because but that will now help, help us. We're very, very, very far. The distance to cover is humongous yeah. and um, it's not an easy transition. Okay. Let me cross over to Machakos where Enoch Musui is standing by with the latest there. Enoch, good morning. What are the people of Machakos saying? Morning, Trevor Mbija. We are coming to you live from Joska area in Mavoko sub-county where we are getting a touch of the feeling in the ground about the residents, how they feel. Let's get uh, the feel from them. Karibu Nwanze Namajina. Hello, my name is Eric Otieno. I'm a resident of Joska here. So, kwa maoni yango, I think uh, basically there's so much lack of unity in the country based on what has just happened. So I think we need to basically see on how we can, uh, because presidency is uh, more of a sign of national unity. So Kenyans are really not uh, united at this point in time. And uh, it's the work of the government to see on how we can be able to ensure that our country is united. Because what has happened to the vice president as a sign of national unity, uh, from my own opinion, uh, is really bringing a lot of disunity in this country. Thank you. 30 seconds kindly, tell us your views. Don't, don't hold the mic. Okay, my name is Samuel from Joska Kamolu, and uh, my views is that uh, the impeachment process was very fast, and I think it would be given time. If the Deputy President legal team said that uh, they need more time, I think they would be given more time, and then we are the dealing, maybe. I think my own opinion is that it was done so fast. Thank you. Okay, Trevor, those are just but a little view from the residents of uh, Joska in Kamulu where they think that it was done hurriedly to impeach the deputy president. From Kamulu in Ma Machakos County, my name is Enoch Musui. Back to you in the studio. Uh, happening after the impeachment of the deputy president. We're also showing you live pictures from inside and outside parliament. Any moment from now, we're still expecting the nominee to be announced. We're also expecting the special sitting. They said it's not a special sitting. The ordinary sitting of parliament to kick off at 9.30. I see there's a lot of feedback here. We'll come to that in just a bit. But also there's one here from Reverend... Canon Evans Omolo, provost at All Saints Cathedral. He says, Trevor, lovely discussion with an excellent panel. Wakili Willis is spot on. We can't assume that removing a shagwa will solve all our problems. What Kenyans need is KK to address pressing issues around the messed up healthcare, a weakening economy, university education funding. We need to see creation of more jobs, offering tax incentives to widen the tax base instead of overtaxation. Otherwise, the ghosts of impeachment will come to haunt President William Ruto. And this is where I'm coming from now, because you see, we're talking about this pedestal that has been put, and you're, talking, you're saying that the threshold, it's not a matter of whether the threshold has been set or not, but is this the opportunity now for any Kenyan, any member of parliament, to start aiming at the top? Well, you see, Trevor, for two days, yeah. we, the Kenyan people, <coughs> were presented with the majesty of a whole legal drama, yeah. great orations and perorations in the Senate. And when you look at the critical issues that were emerging, even during cross-examination, when you look at the issue or, uh, through the motion by uh, Mutuse from the National Assembly, Honorable Mutuse, when you look at the anxiety of Kenyans when they were following up all these issues and asking even critical questions yeah. and even during public particip participation, you realize that Kenyans are concerned about the state of governance. That is true. Governance with respect to the character of politicians, governance with respect to prioritization of issues uh, that need to be implemented and fast-tracked. They are concerned about, and you remember even the questions that were emerging, that now that it comes to the issue of impeachment of deputy president, we are having public participation. Yet in other issues, uh, there is no public participation. This is a clarion call to the, uh, there is no public participation. This is a clarion call to the leadership of President William Ruto, the cabinet, and all parliamentarians uh, that Kenyans are woke. Mm -hmm. Kenyans are watching every move that parliament is doing. And I think, moving forward, there should be no laxity. In fact, this momentum should be sustained. Kenyans are expecting too much. Mm -hmm. They are not living in that place and space where they look at the glass as half empty. Mm -hmm. They want to see how full can it be and what is it that the leadership of President William Ruto is going to do to ensure that that's, that glass of hope, of expectation, is filled? Trevor, the other thing is this. The entry of uh, the next is also full. 
Mm. I'm also expecting that after the discussion about uh, or the, the, uh, the approval of the DP nominee uh, to be designated, that um, the president will also issue executive order number three of 2024, so that it also guides on how now the reorganization of certain mandates within the admin his administration is going to be conducted for purposes of effectiveness. I am sure with the sentiments that emanated from the public participation, the president is fully aware that Kenyans expect so much from him between now and the next election. Yeah. And, and Willis, what do you expect from parliament now? It's an ordinary sitting. Is, is this a wake-up call to them? What is going to happen today is this. Parliament is convening, as was expected. William Ruto has told them, go and pass Kinture Kindiki to become your next deputy president. They will. They will not question him. These are, I've told you, these are puppets. These people don't represent the people of Kenya. So if you expect them to wake up, wake up from what? They are who they are. They've shown us who they are. They were told by William Ruto to impeach Rigabi Gashago. They did that without fail. He has told them to meet on Friday to pass Kithure Kindiki as the next deputy president. They are already starting to meet. They are waiting for the order paper to come to do exactly that. In the afternoon, we'll be sitting here. They will be telling us how Kithure Kindiki is the best thing that ever happened to this republic and how Rigadi is a bad person. The same people who, like two, three weeks ago, were saying how Rigadi is a good person will be telling us how Kindiki is very good. And forgetting that even if you put him there, are you even going to take time to ask yourself, okay, you are previous the CS of Interior. Are you able to say that there are 60 Kenyans who are killed in your time by police? Is there accountability for the deaths? Yeah. You are the CS Interior when Bob Njagi and the Linton brothers were abducted, held in communicado for 32 days, tortured. Have you called for any investigations? Have you taken any action? They are not going to question him. So don't expect anything different. I can predict for you this parliament, until the day they are going to be breached again by the people of Kenya. These ones we are done with. This parliament lacks legitimacy to give the Kenyan people a deputy president. 